All right, welcome. We're going to go ahead and hopefully clear up any confusion about what UV is from last week's code. All right, so let's start with a simple example, hopefully. Uh, you can, if you imagine a 3D object, such as a cube, you know, it's pretty standard if you've opened up any uh, 3D software. Um, and of course, you can do this inside of Elgato as well, just to give yourself a visualization. Um, but if you wanted to add a texture to the surface of that cube, uh, like a picture or a pattern, um, then how the question that you got to ask yourself is how do you tell the computer where to put each part of that texture on the surface? Now, if you were to just take an image that takes up your full uh, square, for example, uh, like a 64 by 64, such as the uh, Gato icon here. And if you were to put use that as a texture on a cube, it's going to put that image on all four sides because by default, the entire image gets put on all sides and that's just uh, a default thing that happens uh, with cubes but uh, this is where uh, UV coordinates come in when you really want to tell it okay this goes on this side this is going on this side this is going on that side uh, such as you would with something like if you're making a dice right you need each side to be completely different and you have to be in control of what goes where well <laughs> UV coordinates are a way of mapping a 2D image onto a 3D object, or in our case here, a 2D surface, which is our sprite. Now, each point on the surface of this object is assigned a set of UV coordinates. And these coordinates will actually correspond to the pixels on our texture. So if we were to look at I just have a affinity photo open here. And if I were to zoom in, we can see all these individual pixels here. Here we have another one there, one there, and so on, right? It just keeps going all the way across vertically and horizontally. Each of those pixels is going to uh, correspond with a UV coordinate for that position. Right? So if we go to or if we take a look at here, uh, uh, something that might be a little easier here, or another way of uh, understanding that is if we take a look at uh, in the 3D world here, right? Like we were saying with the cube, we have our object, we have a 3D object here, and over here on the right is would be like our image, right? That we want to put on there, and all of these points on our image correspond with something on this model. Now, all these dark areas here that you see, the model is not mapped to those specific areas. So if we put something there, nothing is gonna happen. Nothing's gonna show up. But if we were to go to an area that corresponds to one of these coordinates and put something on there, you can see it's gonna appear on the model. And that's happening too, it's just over there on the back. So the coordinates are directly related to the pixels of the image or the texture that you want to put in there. So when we're getting the X and Y or the X or the Y, whichever uh, you go with with your shader when it comes to that, um, what we're doing is we're basically getting each of our pixels, right? And we're tweaking that color. Essentially, is what it's what we're coming down to with this, uh, uh, with this specifically in this shade. All right. So if we go say, take a look at things at one, uh, one pixel at a time. If we take a look at this individual UV coordinate, right? We can come in here and we maybe we're adding green or red to it, right? Over time, and oh, sorry, that's not being shown. So we say we'll take this pixel and the UV coordinate related to this, right? And whether it's X or Y, doesn't matter if we're going vertically or horizontal here. 
And what we're basically doing is we're going one pixel at a time. And we're tweaking the color of it like this. And the way uh, that's happening between uh, the red, blue, and green is we're using uh, sine. It's going to give us a sine wave. And that's basically... Uh, we can say that's moving us from positive down to a negative, right? So we're constantly adding and then removing the color and adding and removing. And based off of uh, the math that goes into that kind of like dictates uh, the type of wave that is. Or how that wave would visually look. I know it's, it, it might be a little hard to uh, imagine, but um, effectively that is what we're doing with our shader. We're going pixel by pixel. And since we're doing this over time... Uh, the color is constantly changing, right? Because we're using actual time in our calculation to get different points on our sine wave. So, a UV coordinate of an object, whether that's 2D or 3D, again, doesn't matter. Each of their coordinates will correspond to a pixel on uh, your texture or your image. In our case, it's our image. We're using the uh, sprite or the icon that comes with every project. And we're taking each of those pixels and we're modifying them all one by one. So UV coordinates range from 0 to 1 in both the U and V direction. I know that sounds a little confusing, U and V direction, but you can kind of think of that as like the X and Y direction. And you can do that because if you think of it like a map uh, of the texture, right? Just, just like a flat image there. Um, then the U direction is going left and right and the V direction is going top to bottom. So it works kind of like uh, X and Y and a vector too. Now when an object gets, or when an object is rendered, the UV coordinates for each pixel on the surface of the object, 2D or 3D, uh, are used to look up the corresponding pixel in uh, that texture's image. This allows the texture to be mapped accurately onto the object. And in our case, UV coordinates are uh, is being used for our 2D sprite. So if you imagine you have a character sprite, it's another way to, that we can look at it is with an animated uh, character. So if I were to just bring this down and just give me a moment to bring some. So I went ahead and I brought in my kangaroo here. And let's see if I can just drag it in. So I have my little kangaroos and normally you would come into your uh, animations, right? And you would come in, in this case, we would say we have three horizontal frames and two horizontal or two vertical frames. And then this way you can now switch between uh, your frames, right? That way you can have your animation going and you keep everything inside of one sprite sheet. Well, what's going on here is where basically breaking up the total size uh, in this case into uh, chunks of the full UV coordinate. So we're saying from uh, this point to this point is uh, one, one complete set for our UV texture. And then we're saying this next block and then this block and this block, right? They're all representing an entire texture of UV coordinates or an entire set of coordinates. And you can do the same thing if you were to come down to frame coordinates in the animation here. If you were to change the X and Y of those, you'll notice you're going to get the same, the same uh, result here, right? As if you were to just change the actual frame itself here. And these frame coordinates are essentially the UV coordinates of um, this specific texture. Again, if I just stuck this out, if 
but they're the coordinates of this texture that we split up. And this is, of course, what you would do if you wanted to change the appearance of something. Of course, you could always change the texture uh, altogether if you don't want to use a sprite sheet. And that would that would also work in a sense, but the sprite sheet obviously would be easier to work with. So UV coordinates, again, just relate to a pixel on the image. So in our case, the UV coordinates here that we're getting is uh, represented by each pixel of the icon here. And that'll work the same with two, both 2D and 3D. And we're basically using each of those coordinates to change how much red, how much green, and how much blue is in that specific pixel. So we're just getting very specific, well, specific, I guess you could say. Hopefully that uh, helped clarify a little bit on what UV coordinates are. Uh, I feel like I kind of rambled a little bit there. Hopefully I was clear enough to clear up any confusion. I know I just kind of talked about a little bit about uh, what UV coordinates are in, in general, not super specific on here, but it's that same principle that gets applied into our shader here. And uh, I've got to be rambling on a little too much here, so I'm just going to cut off here. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. Again, hopefully, hopefully that cleared up a little bit of confusion on what UV coordinates are if you're uh, completely new or you've never had to mess with them. But with that, take care. Have yourselves a good one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.